Hello and welcome to Action Teacher Video. Video is a powerful tool that teachers are using to reflect on their own practice and in this series we feature videos produced by teachers themselves. Video is also a way of communicating ideas and we're here to discuss the contents and implications of one teacher video that we'll be looking at in a moment. It's a video that features an innovative approach to special needs teaching in Lexton Springs Special School captured on camera by teacher Jackie Wood and is called The Teaching of Early Communication Skills for Children with Severe Learning Difficulties. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Jackie Wood. Jackie, hello. Hi. Joining Jackie is another teacher with some similar experiences and concerns from Iskal Eru Delin, Lisa Reese. And I'm also delighted to introduce Adrian Jones. Hello. hello and welcome. Jackie, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the background to the video we're about to watch. Well, until recently, the school has been in special measures, which means that two years ago it failed its Ofsted. We've had frequent visits by Her Majesty's inspectors, and so each of the members of staff have been under the constant eye in everything they do. Now, we've been particularly working on individual needs and differentiation, and one of the things I would like to gain from this video is that the staff learn to see themselves in a better light. They need to get, regain their confidence, and I think that by doing a video and being able to share with other people some good practice that we're doing, um, and being able to explain why they're doing it and talk together, this would be very helpful to them. My name is Jackie Wood and I'm the head teacher of Lexton Springs School. We cater for children aged 3 to 19 with a range of learning difficulties from profound and multiple through to severe or mild. We also have children with autism or associated communication difficulties. At the moment, I'm sitting in our sensory garden on a story chair which was hand carved here. We're going to focus our video on children in our early years department. Everybody is listening. It's time work. to work. Can you find work and watch on? We have attempted to show a variety of activities to demonstrate the acquisition of communication skills. Here, we see Alicia and Jenna choosing the symbol for work from a choice board. Next, children are being encouraged to participate in a multimodal session to learn about the weather. We use signs, symbols, voice, gesture, pictures, photos, or a variety of ICT resources to support this. Registration is very much a part of this multimodal approach. Pupils are encouraged to speak and sign yes, as their names are called, and they are shown their photograph. Here, Sam is given a little help with his signing. Yes, yes I am. Yes, I am. I am that. Sam, Alicia, and Jenna are helped to select the correct photograph of another pupil in the class. Sam is also able to select his own name from a choice of three familiar names without the aid of a photograph. 
The classroom displays include a visual timetable where symbols, words and pictures help to reinforce daily routines, weather, the date and the day of the week. Daily repetition of these activities is a key factor in queuing pupils into the various activities and learning opportunities. The teacher models Makaton signing to reinforce key words. In this sequence, Sam is shown signing yes without help. This is clearly progress from the previous clip where Sam is given some help to sign. However, on some occasions he may still need help with this. This activity follows on from the choosing a friend sequence. Now the pupils are encouraged to identify the friend and to actually walk over to them and greet them. This involves listening skills, comprehension and social skills and is an extremely important part of the whole process of learning to communicate, which underpins all our learning activities. Finally, we are in the ICT suite with Alicia using the plasma screen. This session demonstrates how a pupil with severe learning difficulties is able to access and respond to an interactive computer program called Big Bang, where the slightest touch to the screen will create a cause and effect. You're looking. Oh, look. oh it's got bigger. <laughs> Do you have another go? As you can see, Alicia is able to activate this program with minimal help and anticipates the response beautifully. You're dancing as well. Jackie, wonderful video. But I was just wondering how you are going to take this on. We're intending to share it with the governors and help them to understand and help them with their um, assessment and their monitoring. With a newly qualified teacher who's just started with us this term, she's got no experience with special needs and so we're intending to help her to realise the different modes of communication and how we can differentiate for the children in her class. And one of our other um, main focus that we need to work on is with the parents because they've some of them have lost, lost confidence. And how would you show progression or uh, and, and use it for assessment and record keeping? The video footage is we, we keep video in with each child's file so that if anybody needs to like um, a teacher or a parent or an inspector or anyone else wants to come along and see what they can do uh, it's all dated um, with annotated um, comments written alongside um, and it's just very useful because you can compare. I mean for example one of the ways that we do that is uh, when a child is learning to eat independently and often a parent will say they won't use a knife and fork or they won't mm. um, choose foods on their own and you can say well they're doing it in school well if you can video that and then ask the parent to come in and see it um, then you can work together with the parents at home and that's a very important part of our work. In this sequence, Sam is shown signing yes without help. This is clearly progress from the previous clip where Sam is given some help to sign. However, on some occasions he may still need help with this. What did you think of that? I was interested to know whether he was aware of the camera and whether you find, well, whether you find that children are aware when you're actually filming them like that. Most of the time Sam wouldn't have been aware of the camera, just occasionally he has looked at it. Um, we, find, we find generally that it's the adults uh, that notice the camera more than the children, particularly in my school where they're very self-conscious at the moment. Lisa, do you use video a lot with your teachers as well? I haven't done. It's been mostly with the children and I think this year in particular we've, we've used the camera a lot in the classroom and the, the LSAs in the classroom have just got used to it being there and I'm not the way I sort of film things, I don't wander around with them, I don't ask anybody to wander around or set it up in a corner or to the one side of the room and aim it where I want it to be and everybody just gets on with what we're doing. What about as a research tool for, for future development? I've seen some excellent results, particularly with communication. Uh, if you can catch 
the very small nuances of improvement. Um, it's, it's just a, a wonderful way and the children love looking at themselves and that takes you into yet a whole new element of history for example um, in our particular form of education looking at themselves on video is, is history for them and um, it's, it's very enjoyable and they often see for themselves that they're progressing and it's a, a, a way for them to um, self-analyse. So we've we've started using um, a camera in, in the classroom, a, a normal mm -hmm. to take photographs of the children because we split them up to do individual work and somebody will take a photo, you'll go around and take a photograph of them doing something. So our plenary session is we'll quickly plug it into um, a whiteboard, mm -hmm. plug the camera in and say, right, this is what everybody's been doing and we'll talk, bring up a photograph of what they've been doing and talk about it. So, like I say, it's reflecting on what they've just done. It's history, mm -hmm. it's a plenary session mm -hmm. that we, you would normally do anyway. Um, so even just talking now, you think, well, what if we use the video to do that and quickly plug the video in? And then they could reflect back on watching a video of themselves actually doing something. So for future work, I think it's got an awful lot of potential to, to engage the children in themselves and what they can actually do. Do you have another go? Don't you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As you can see, Alicia is able to activate this programme with minimal help and anticipates the response beautifully. You're dancing as well. Adrian, we see there a little girl really responding well to the use of technology. What do you think? ICT must be a really important part of this multimodal approach that you use. It's developing very fast and in every area. Um, basically, it, it's, it's cause and effect. You can gain attention. So almost any subject matter that you want to, you can find a program to help you with, whether that be um, a national curriculum subject like history or geography or something like learning to write. Um, but initially, it's just gaining their attention. And is that the same in your school? Yeah, I think with the way uh, technology is developing, it's a brilliant way of encouraging children who may not communicate mm -hmm. in a functional way to engage them in something that later on you could develop into giving them a means of communication. For example, learning about cause and effect. Mm -hmm. If I touch the screen, something happens, and yeah, it's exciting and motivating. But then that could develop into using a single switch, and you press the switch, and the same thing happens. And then that switch could be turned into a Big Mac. You press the switch, and it says, can I have a drink? And you get a drink. So it's exactly the same thing, but they may be more mot motivated initially to use a computer, which has got all these pretty pictures on it. And then you develop those skills that they can and motivate them to use those cause and effect skills into something then that they can use as a functional manner to, to ask for basic things in their, in their lives. How can this be translated into working with children in mainstream schools, do you think? I think it's just that there are many children in, in mainstream schools with special needs and it's realising that you just need to, to help them um, get back to basics, really. I mean, they learn through their senses. You know, when you talk about learning through senses, it's actually how everybody learns. Well, I think that's a good point to end on, but I'm sure that this will provoke much more discussion. You can, of course, see the video again and find out more from our website at teachers.tv. It only remains for me to say thank you to our teacher producer, Jackie Wood, and our guest, Lisa Rees, and, of course, Adrian Jones. Please join us again on Action Teacher Video, and in the meantime, from me, Xanthi Steen, goodbye.